Another hard truth about reselling is... Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, you guys, in this video, we are going to have a reseller vlog. I am gonna be pulling orders and we're gonna talk about some of the hard truths about being a reseller mixed in with my what sold. So I'm gonna show you what sold, which there is more than normal because I have been doing something different that is helping me generate more sales on eBay. So you guys know it's been a little slow and... um Doing this has helped, so we're gonna talk about that as well. And let's get started. All right, we're going in here to craft tote two. And I sold actually a big money bolo, but this one is not a big money bolo. It is a bread and butter, but it's a great bread and butter. But the next one, well, there's two in here actually. <laughs> that are bread and butter. So let me see if I can find them here. These are kind of just my crafting things. And they actually, here they are. They're in here. Give me one second to get this unzipped. Okay, so these are um, quilt squares. And I sold, I believe it was this one, for $15.50. And then it was this one right here. Yes for $18.60. So those are two nice bread and butters. The buyer paid shipping on those. So I do have a few left, not many of those. I'm just gonna leave those out of the bag. Put my other cross stitch and look at all these cross stitch items. Love picking up cross stitch. Easy to ship, easy to list. And most of it, you know, sells relatively quickly. Sometimes it's long tail, but um, it's definitely just easy. You know, it doesn't take a lot of time. Okay, craft tote three. So what I did on this one, I sold this for $155. And I hope I can find it here. There it is. All right, so here's what I did. This is uh, stamped cross stitch quilt blocks. And I was looking on here, I got a whole bunch of these and it was saying, let me find where I read it, right here. So it says for a king size quilt, no, that's not where it says it. I read it somewhere. It told me how many I needed. Uh, yeah, there it is. King size requires nine packages. It's right here. I was looking at the dimensions. So I had nine, so what I did is I just made it a listing for nine and put king in the title. So I sold all of these to one person as one listing for $155. Now, I could have went with twin, I could have went with double, I could have went with queen, and if you think about it, technically, they could make a twin and a double if they wanted because there's nine packages in here or they could make a queen, but either way, they have enough to make a king. So I felt like because I had so many, instead of doing single listings to make it one listing, that it would sell for more money. And I don't know if that was the right thing to do, but that's what I decided to do. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Again, this sold for $155 plus shipping. Okay, so the next item is in tote 47. Where is tote 47? They used to be in order, but with the shuffling of selling things and all of that fun stuff, things have kind of gotten a little bit mixed up. So I just have to find tote 47 here, and then I'm going to show you what I sold. So I'm going to turn the camera off while I find it. Okay, I was like, it might be in that dollhouse tote, which I have very little left. But I didn't write down where I got it and what I paid for it. And now I know where I got it and what I paid for it. This all came from an, it was like a, an estate sale, but it was just somebody's house estate sale. And there was a big thing, a dollhouse furniture. This is a dollhouse vase. And I sold this vase for $11.16 in the buyer paid shipping. This was very, very long tail. It took a long, long time to sell, but it sold for a nice profit. And this tote was stuffed, and this is all I have left. So definitely dollhouse furniture can be 
a great item to pick up. Some of it sells fast and some of it takes a while. Okay, so my label printer just ran out. So I'm going to pull this out. I am going to pop off this side. I'm going to pull this out. I'm trying to do this with one hand. This one is up and ready to go. So I'm going to pop that on here. This is from a swimsuit, guys. I just stuck it there. I'm like, I know it was stuck on another swimsuit. I'm like, I know it goes to something, so I'll just stick it there. All right, and then you push that back on. And again, I'm doing this with one hand. And it slides back in. And then you're going to feed it into here. And if you don't know, um, thermal printers do not take ink. So you do not have to buy ink. I did not know that. I know that sounds silly for all of you that knew that, but I did not know that. Mm. I thought I was going to have to be buying ink and, and then I just tighten it up and then it's ready to go. Right. You can see me. Hi. Hi. Now it should be lined up and then it'll stop right at the spot. So I use these and I just put like stickers on my tote and stuff like that. So I don't waste those but usually there's not waste like this. I do have a whatnot show tonight. It was going to be jewelry, but I'm thinking about doing smalls and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, completely changing the category from jewelry to something else and just having fun with some small items so I can still keep that discounted shipping for you guys and like vintage figurines, hair accessories, you know, smalls keychains. I will throw in some jewelry, but not the whole entire show. I just want to mix it up tonight. What do you guys think about that? So uh, maybe some toys. So follow me down on whatnot. There is a $15 referral link. If you use that, you're going to get $15 to shop. You can use that with anyone. I know many, many of you have used it and maybe some of you have used it and you don't want jewelry. Well, this is a great opportunity to come on over and maybe find something that interests you. I did also enter, um, not enter, I was asked to be a part of the Boo Fest, and that is going to be on August 25th. My time slot is noon to two. I am the first person on Friday morning to go. Um, as you guys know, I do not do morning shows. I do nighttime shows. So this is going to be really different from me, from me, for me. But I know a lot of you have asked, can I do daytime shows? Can I go on earlier? I've been trying to go on at 9.15 certain nights instead of 10.15. So I've made that change. And I'm going to see how this show goes. And if it goes well, and you guys come over and participate and be involved in the chat, maybe buy, you don't have to buy, but at least people are there, then I will definitely consider doing some daytime shows. So let me know your feedback on that down in the description of the video and let me know if you're excited for a this and that video tonight on whatnot a show all right you guys let's see what else i sold today next item i sold i sold two of them for 34 dollars 70 and the buyer paid shipping so you can see i kept adding stickers because i kept selling out of the sizes and i kept condensing them into totes uh, these are brawls and i don't think this is the right tote it's not where is my other one? Is it this one? Those are new with tags. This? Maybe that was the right tote. Let me see. Oh, maybe it is. Okay, so this is a size, no, 38F. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I hope that I didn't lose it. Goodness. Whew. I just found another tote. This is probably the smaller sizes. 42D. I sold two of these to the same person and I should have two here. 42D. So these I picked up at a, and I have one more left, at a discount store. And um, a lot of times the labels will be marked through to prevent store returns. Sometimes I will try to get that marker off. Sometimes I just leave it. Um, and let the buyer know that the it is crossed through to prevent store returns. For some reason, this one didn't have it, but I bought these a long time ago. I have probably maybe 10 left, 
from the discount store. These are great sellers. They are Cacique brand and they are plus size bras. Okay, so here's another thing that I wanted to get your feedback on. This tote is literally full of crafters jewelry. There is a ton. So I was thinking about putting them in one to two pound, um, one to two pounds in a Ziploc bag and having a crafter show. Does that interest anyone? Let me know down in the comments. This would be over on whatnot because this tote just keeps getting fuller and fuller and fuller. I know so many of you craft like this one has rhinestones in that you could repurpose so much things or so much things, so many things that you could use to, uh, some of them just need clasps. Some of them need restrung. So there's beads, there's just different things. Some of you I know like to junk journal. Some of the things would be good for that. You guys let me know in the comments if you're interested in a jewelry crafters items show. All right, this next item a viewer picked up for $10. It's a pair of pants and she did message me asking me if I combined shipping. So the answer to that is yes, absolutely. Now I do prefer that you guys message me before you pay. Uh, because once you pay, it's hard to, you can't really modify the shipping. But because she paid for one item, what I told her to do is go in and make me offers on the other items, and then I will send her an invoice with discounted shipping. But if you automatically pay on eBay, it charges you the shipping right then. So if you send the offer, I'm able to go in and adjust the shipping. So if you guys have customers that reach out to you that want combined shipping, that is what I recommend you tell them do, to do is to make an offer. Now you can also set up discounted shipping on items uh, that it automatically does it when they add items to their cart. I do have that on some of my items, but not some of my bigger stuff. So that is another option as well that you guys can play around with. So just a little feedback there, something that happened today that weighs a workaround, I guess, to give somebody the combined shipping. So let's look at the next item that's sold. It's in this tote room and I never put the lid back on the craft tote. And I think I need to get into one of these bottom totes, I do. So we're gonna do the slide. This is how I move my totes, I slide them. And a lot of you probably think this is crazy, think I should have shelving units, and maybe I should, but uh, I, can, I can get these three high and move them pretty easily. So what did I sell? That's not even the right thing. I'm in the wrong thing. I'm in the wrong, whoa! You guys, I leaned on a tote and it totally fell back. Where is the tote? Oh my goodness. It was right here. Did I move it? Oh my goodness. See, I have everything labeled. I bet it's this one right here. Nope, that's the craft tote. I have a whole tote of, did it get over here? There's no way it's over here. No. You guys, it was right here. It was right here. It's not there. Oh, I bet it's this gray one. <laughs> it's not the gray one. How on earth, where did it go? Okay, so the life of a reseller can be really hard. All right, I'm just gonna tell you. And when I talked about reselling being hard, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, we're gonna talk about some of that as the video goes on, but I'm gonna find these pants and I will be right back because I'm just completely, oh, here, is it, no, is it in here? No, oh my goodness, this is so strange. All right, I'll be right back. Oh my goodness, I don't even know how this happened. Like I'm the only person that messes with my inventory. My skirts, my plus size skirts have always been right there, always. So the only thing I can think is I somehow moved this, my, it was over here, these pants to here, and then they somehow got moved here and then I move this here and then over there. And I'm like, I can't find the pants. The pants disappeared. Here's the pants, guys. It's okay. Everything's okay. I just have to remember that they are in a different spot. These are size 22, 24. I have a whole bunch left. If anybody else is interested, I sold these for $10 plus shipping. Pick these up at a discount store. Cost of goods, anywhere from $1 to $3. Average cost of goods when I go to that discount store is $3. I don't do that anymore. But when I used to, that was my average cost. All right, so what have I done to increase my eBay sales? I have started listing more. 
Uh, there were times where I was taking a week off and not listing anything. And why is that? That's because I have started whatnot. I am putting out a video every single day on YouTube. I am selling on multiple platforms and I just have a lot going on. And eBay was kind of getting pushed to the side and I was still making sales daily, but I have a big store. I mean, I have thousands of items listed so I cannot list and still have sales, but I did see a big dip and I have taken, I don't know, three or four days over the past two or three weeks and not consistently every day listing, but getting a bunch, a bunch done in one day. And I have seen an increase in my eBay sales from that. Now, do I think consistent listing is important? Absolutely. And if I had the time, I would do that. But, um, I have added in whatnot, as we talked about, and I know some of you don't want to hear about whatnot, but for those of you do, that do, it does change it does change how much time you spend on other things, all right? So if I do a whatnot show, I'm usually on anywhere from three to five hours, and typically it's a five hour show, and then I'm usually shipping anywhere from two to four hours the next day. So plus I have to source the goods. So it is time consuming and I'm only going on three days a week. Donatella is going on two to three times a day. I have no idea how the woman does it. She is a total machine. Go follow Donatella on whatnot. She is incredible. Um, I don't know. It, it's a lot. Uh, same with YouTube. For those of you that are thinking about doing YouTube, it is a lot of work for not a lot of pay if you're just an average YouTuber with average views, okay? So that would be me. I'm not getting 20, 30, 40, 100, 200,000 views on each video. I'm getting anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 views per video. So for me, it's a source of income, but it is not a huge income. So I guess the hard truth is when you divide your time, you are going to take a decrease probably in every area, but you're going to maybe see an increase overall and have different streams of income coming in, which I love because if I'm slow on eBay, I know that I can go over to whatnot and I can have a show. If um, views are down on YouTube, I know that I just need to list more. So there's different things that I can do to increase revenue in each area. I can cross post more with List Perfectly. If you guys aren't using List Perfectly, I love it. Here's a demo video of how it works. And you can check that out down below. If you decide it's a good fit for you, you get 30% off your first month with referral code Bola Buddies, all one word. So check that out. Um, especially if you don't do YouTube and you don't, um, and you only sell on eBay, think about getting on multiple platforms for sure. Highly recommend it. Uh, let's see what else. So I guess my biggest takeaway for you guys, the hard truth is if you're struggling with sales, list more. And it's not the new items that I'm selling. There are some, but I'm selling old stuff. So I don't know if when you list new items, it brings your old stuff up in the algorithm. I have no idea. But the brawls that I sold today have been sitting in my, e my, e my eBay store for probably two or three years. And they sold today. So I don't understand the algorithm. I don't know how it works. But what I'm here to tell you is I started listing more on eBay again. And I am getting more sales on eBay. And I did cross post a bunch of items the other day to Poshmark and Mercari. And I have seen an uptick on those platforms as well. Nothing going out today for either of those platforms. But I just sold a brooch on Mercari for $175, which was super exciting. Um, so yeah, that was awesome. That'll be in a future video. And I don't do Mercari and Poshmark videos very often, but I do have a couple coming out very soon. They are scheduled. So stay tuned for those if you want to see hard goods that I'm selling on Poshmark and Mercari. This item here is a bread and butter. It sold for $7.44 and the buyer paid shipping. And 
I believe I picked this up at the Goodwill bins. I didn't mark it down for some reason, but I think that's where I got it. But I think I've sold these before also. So this one may have been from a garage sale. Either way, probably anywhere from a dollar to two dollars. I sold it for seven dollars and 44 cents plus shipping. Not a huge profit, but definitely a sale. And a sale is a sale, right? So happy to have every single sale. Sold on Poshmark. This was a retail arbitrage buy. Uh, I ended up paying $7.50 each for these. I sold this on Poshmark for $15. By the time I sent an offer and discounted shipping, my profit was, uh, I think, $9.85 minus the $7.50 I paid for it. So about $1.50 profit. So not great. This was not a good buy. Uh, retail arbitrage when you're looking online can be good or bad. You really, really have to be careful not to overspend because retail arbitrage is totally different than walking into a thrift store. Now, I did get other things from Fredericks of Hollywood that I flipped for a nice profit. I've also done retail arbitrage on other online sites. You go on, you search for coupons, you search the clearance aisle. Sometimes you can use coupons with the clearance section, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you will load your cart and go to pay and then the coupon doesn't work, that's no fun. I don't do this anymore, but it is an option. So, um, not a good profit on this. I've just been trying to get rid of these. I did sell out of the black. Um, so I had a black long wig and a red long wig. And I thought maybe people would like buy this if they wanted to be like the Little Mermaid or something like that, but it is a really bright red, so it hasn't worked out for me very well. So just be careful. Um, this is another costume that I have. It's really just the ears and the choker and the tail. And I think, if I remember correctly, I got this at Gabriel Brothers. And it looks like it retailed for like 20 bucks. And I sold a bunch of these, but I still have quite a few sitting here that have not sold. Costumes are tricky for me. Let me know what you guys think about costumes down in the comments. So I just wanted to show you the Poshmark breakdown here. It was $15. My fee was $3. My discount to the buyer was $2.02 because I sent them an offer. My net earnings was $9.98. So subtract the $7.50 I paid for it. I'm not getting rich off this one, guys. But I made my money back. It's out of my house. So I think I only have, what, three more to sell? And get those Halloween items listed because these items are starting to sell now. This next item is in Tote DD right here. And this came from the Goodwill bins. So I probably got a dollar or so in it. And when I saw it, I had a feeling that it was going to be a bolo. And I will say that I do believe that if I would have waited longer and held out, I could have gotten more for this item. Um, I took an offer of $50 and the buyer paid shipping. Now this is going internationally. So they did have all of their international fees. So they actually paid more. This is a squishable, not a squishmallow, a squishable. And some of these can go for big money. Definitely look it up and research which ones go for big money. Uh, it's a cuttable, some sort of sea fish or something like that. I'm not even sure what it is. I used Google Lens to figure it out. Sold it for $50 plus shipping. Right here, I am drawing a complete blank. And I don't know why I did not put it in the notes of where I got it and what I paid for it. I can't remember if this was a garage sale or the Goodwill bins. And I... When I actually packaged this, it was so big that I went ahead and put it in a poly mailer so it's ready to go. I will add more tape to this because you can see right here it's already splitting. I may double bag it, but this monster truck costume is amazing. The lights on the front light up. I figure this is probably somebody who is early costume shopping for Halloween so they don't have to spend as much. I sold this for $62 plus shipping, and I want to say I got it at a garage sale for $5, or I got it at the Goodwill bins. And the reason I'm confused is I got two at the same time. One of them was from the movie Cars, and it sold really quickly, but it didn't have the headlights or anything fancy. And I got this one, and I think I got one at a garage sale and one at the bins, and I don't remember which is which. But either way, probably around $5 for this into 62 plus shipping. So definitely a great costume bolo. 
right, the next item is in tote 32. I picked this up on Facebook Marketplace. I usually keep my plush in one spot, but sometimes randomly I will pick a tote. And this day I was in tote 32. So I sold this little kitten. It's Adventure Planet, or no, I'm sorry. It is Animal Adventure. I sold this for $7 and the buyer paid shipping and my cost of goods was 50 cents at Facebook Marketplace. This next item is in D and it is a oh firefighter and i got this at the goodwill bins and it was a nice surprise i sold this for fifteen dollars and fifty cents and the buyer paid shipping and if i recall it just says china there's no other markings on it it's got some issues but i just thought due to the fact that it was a firefighter that somebody might buy this. I mean, you could technically make it a cake topper if you wanted, but it's a little bit big. It's about the size of my hand, so pretty big. But yeah, $15.50 buyer paid shipping, and my cost of goods was probably less than a dollar on this at the Goodwill Bins by weight. Hey, Bella Buddy, so I decided to do this and that tonight. So it's gonna be like postcards. I've got some Christmas ornaments. I have hair accessories. I have trinkets and figurines, vintage and some newer stuff also. I will mix in some jewelry, but it just hit me. I'm like, I don't wanna do jewelry tonight. I just want to relax, hang out, do some fun items. I've got some cool keychains and just all kinds of small items. So we can keep that discounted shipping, the flat rate shipping of $8.35 is the max you will pay during the show. So that is awesome. So I will see you guys tonight at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And again, let me know if you want to see some daytime shows. I'm up to it. We're going to see how this Halloween show goes. Make sure you bookmark all of my shows that are currently active. And I hope to see you guys tonight. Some of the toys um, from the last show that I didn't get done. Those are all toys. So I may pick through a th some of those and pull out some of the smaller items and include those in the sale tonight just to kind of mix it up. But they have to be small because I want that discounted shipping for you guys. Another hard truth about reselling is that you pretty much work every single day. Now, the good news is, is you can take off whenever you want because you're your own boss. This is if you do reselling full time. I absolutely love being a reseller. I love making videos on YouTube. Uh, I do struggle with finding a balance. That's one thing I struggle with because I'm trying to do probably too much, but I do love it all. And I wanna keep bringing you guys good content. So let me know down in the description, uh, positive or negative feedback, as long as it's nice, guys. I don't care if you guys tell me, like, I don't like it when you do this. I like it when you do this. I may not make the changes that you suggest. <laughs> Um, because everybody has different feedback and different things they want to see. But definitely let me know down in the comments, maybe some constructive criticism. All right. And if it's about my pronunciation, we well, can just forget about it because that is not going to change. I am not going to Google words. I don't have time for that. I'm already spending two to three hours on each video I make. And if I had to look up every word that I didn't know how to say, it would be like five to six hours. All right. Because we all know that that is one of my struggles and you're just going to have to accept me for how I am <laughs> on that one. So I'm just going to keep doing my best, sounding it out. And uh, you guys that put that in the comments, like how to say things and you like space it out for me. I do remember some of it, but I do struggle with that. So if you're new here, well, you'll see. You'll see. And if you're old here, well, you just know. If you know, you know. And if you've been here a while, you know. All right. I don't even know what I was going to say next. <laughs> I'm just like, next. <laughs> oh, I also wanted to mention on the Halloween show, it is a daytime show, and I'm going to be doing a bunch of giveaways on whatnot. So make sure you guys bookmark that show for the Boo Fest daytime noon to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday the 25th. Halloween jewelry, and I'm gonna mix in some other little Halloween fun items as well. So see you then. So I am gonna put some links down in the description to my upcoming whatnot shows so you guys can go over and follow the Boo Fest book market. There's going to be a ton of people participating in this. It's going to be super fun. So if you are looking for Halloween items, definitely, uh, definitely 
check it out. So there's going to be vintage decor and there's also going to be jewelry and it's going to be like every other show. Mine is going to be mostly jewelry, but I do have some fun this and that that I'm going to include. So don't forget to use that $15 down below. No, don't forget to use the link down below to join Whatnot and you'll get $15 to shop. Definitely a great day to spend that money. And again, I'm doing a bunch of giveaways, so I will see you guys then. And thanks for watching. Okay, so for you jewelry experts out there, I'm hoping to get your opinion on this. I found this beautiful piece and look at the construction on this. Look at the prongs. Um, I did have my husband test it with the gemstone tester. It is reading glass. There are absolutely no markings on this item. Look at the detail and the construction of this. Does anybody know the maker of this item? It is not signed. It is absolutely, I mean, it's stunning. And I don't even think you guys can see, like, look at this. It is so, so beautiful. So if anybody knows anything about this bracelet, I would love for you to give me some feedback down below. Or if you have a way that I can research it, I've tried Google Lens. I've asked around to some of my friends. They've given me some feedback. I mean, one thing I know is I think it holds some value and I think it's beautiful, but I just, if I could find a maker, that would be incredible. So if you guys know anything about this, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I hope to see you at my This and That show tonight on Whatnot. It's going to be lots of fun. I already have some great ideas of things I'm going to bring. I am starting at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time instead of 10.15. Um, a lot of people have expressed concern about how late it is and it's hard for them to get there. So hopefully some of you that don't normally join can come tonight. So see you soon and Thanks for watching.